every movement we make in life is biomechanics. So every movement in cricket is biomechanics as well. So run up, which I think is the first key phase um, in generating momentum, but running up as fast as possible, although some of the research says is that is the case. That actually, if you dig deeper into it, there's an optimal run up speed for everybody. And arriving yeah. into back foot contact with a nice set of conditions that you can then remain stable and keep that momentum through that phase into front foot contact. Um, and then you want to arrive at front foot contact with all the famous key indicators that are now quite widespread on social media in terms of trying to land with a straight front leg, um, delay the upper body and the bowling arm, and then allow all of that momentum to generate or to transfer with a straight leg through up into the upper body. I'd urge all youngsters to work on technique over strength if they've got the time. Yeah, some good biomechanics, be aligned, make sure that you're in a stable place and then use that to accelerate from the floor upwards. Cricket Love Stories with me, Neil Kagram. Today we're joined by Paul Felton. Paul, how are things going, your end? I'm really good, thank you. Um, yeah, just getting back into pre-season here in England, so some coaching stuff going on and other things with bits and pieces research-wise, which is great. So Paul, this is going to be our chat about biomechanics when it comes to fast bowling. Before we get deeper into the chat, do you want to just run through your background in cricket your academics etc yeah so um always been interested in cricket from a young age it's probably the one thing at school I was better than everybody else at rather than football or something like that where my mates went off into so I've always been really keen on playing cricket and bowling um did a went to Loughborough obviously really enticed by that for the sport reasons ended up doing a maths degree which kind of links really well with biomechanics down the line but never had any plans to go into biomechanics um True story, just sat in my room one afternoon with a load of graduate corporate job interviews lined up and Googled sport and maths and ended up in biomechanics. Um, did a master's and at the end of the master's, a PhD opportunity come up with England cricket. Was fortunate enough to get it and kind of snowballed from there, really. Um, eight years later, um, I've done a lot of work with England cricket around fast bowling um, and then moved on to now I'm a senior lecturer at NTU, Nottingham Trent University. Um, and now I do teaching, uh, research in different areas, not just cricket, but also I've got some consultancy stuff I do on the side working with different teams. Um, so some stuff with Western Australia, Cricket Island, England cricket still. Um, and then I'm a coach developer in the England cricket coach education pathway as well. So lots of different pieces of different areas, but yeah, kind of just snowballed and got lucky in the effect of the way it's gone, but it's really enjoyable. Now. When one talks about biomechanics, what does it actually mean in the context of cricket? If you take bowling and batting and even fielding as a whole? Yeah, so I think we get really wrapped up in really complicated definitions of biomechanics and what it is. Um, and so I try and go real back to basics when we do it um, and coach education and talk about it in terms of biomechanics is just the study of movement and the physical or the physical movement and the body. So every movement we make in life is biomechanics. So every movement in cricket is biomechanics as well. So if we're batting, we have to move or bowling, we have to move um, and fielding, we have to move. So everything's biomechanics. And then within that, you have to understand what's the best ways to do things, what the individual can do and what's the best way they can do it. Not necessarily what you think is just the best way to do it in general. And then we can look at strength, um, range of motion. Um, other bits and pieces, the time available, you've got to complete the task, how somebody's learned the task before. Uh, there's lots of different areas within biomechanics that we think about as coaches all the time, but we don't go around saying we're biomechanists, we're, talkers, and we're coaches or technical coaches. So, um, yeah, we're all biomechanists, but nobody likes the work because they just think physics, maths and horribleness straight away. When it comes to bowling, is momentum and the order in which the key body parts move is that the underlying basis to it all when it comes to fast bowling specifically so all movements for speed are pretty much underlined by momentum um, and the way our bodies move so um, there's fundamentals with momentum that it's the mass times velocity is the equation for momentum and different parts of our body weigh more than other parts so we can move them either faster or slower depending on whether they're heavier or lighter so you see in lots of different sporting movements, we tend to balance and develop speed with our big leg muscles and trunk muscles and then impart that onto our 
lighter part of our body and let it transfer through to hands, bats, balls, etc., whatever we're hitting or throwing. So, um, yeah, there's some underlying principles around momentum which govern all sporting movements and the way we do them. And the timing of when we pass this momentum on within the movement kind of governs what they end up looking like. Um, and cricket bowling looks really different to throwing because you have the constriction around the elbow and you can see how the body and people over time have learned to run up and deliver it in the manner we do in fast bowling rather than standing still and throwing it with a straight arm, for instance. We actually break down the bowling action the different phases, back foot contact, front foot contact, ball release. How do they, um, how does each part contribute to one being able to bowl fast? Yeah, so I'm really keen on keeping things really simple. Um, so I think you can break down the fast bowling movement into a series of different movements. And the key thing at the end is obviously ball speed, skill, direction. But within their movements, there's different things that are key at the end of that. So with a run-up, how much momentum have you got at the end of the run-up? Which direction is it going in? Um, and that can be sideways as well as up and down. So if you run up and jump really high, it's not very effective because you lose all your speed upwards. Um, so you've got the run-up, which I think is the first key phase um, in generating momentum. But running up as fast as possible, although some of the research says is that, is the case they're actually if you dig deeper into it there's an optimal run-up speed for everybody we don't all run up like olympic sprinters so um understanding what that is for each individual making sure that you run up nicely aligned you don't have a big change of direction you don't jump too high and arriving into back foot contact with a nice set of conditions that you can then remain stable and keep that momentum through that phase into front foot contact um, and then you want to arrive at front foot contact with all the famous key indicators that are now quite widespread on social media in terms of trying to land with a straight front leg, um, delay the upper body and the bowling arm, and then allow all of that momentum to generate or to transfer with a straight leg through up into the upper body and in up to the ball. So we're generating or transferring all of that momentum um, using our lower half to balance the big muscles and then allowing it to transfer up our body um, to the lighter segments. And hopefully ball speed is very quick at the tops. It's very light. Can you bowl fast without having a brace front leg, that shoulder hip separation? Um, good question. So the best way to bowl, I think, is with all of them attributes. But that doesn't mean that you can't bowl quick without all of them, if that makes sense. So the pace ceiling, if we were to take the optimal person to bowl really quickly, and there's been a few around the 100 mile an hour mark, a lot of them have had most of their attributes or had some sort of attribute that helps them. So a lot of time people talk about Brett Lee versus Sean Tate and their similar speeds on the speed gun. Sean Tate had an incredible um flexibility and power that he could generate in the upper body in terms of his hip shoulder separation so um actually bending the front leg probably gave him a little bit more time to use that and generate ball speed so there's a bit of a trade-off across all of these different parts of our body um i would say the best way to bowl is with all of them but it doesn't mean that you can't overcome them if you've got certain strengths in other areas that might overcome some of the weaknesses and I don't think we know enough yet to understand some of the inter-technique relationships in terms of are you better off slightly bending your front knee so that you can use more hip shoulder separation or arm delay um, and where them relationships lie. We just know within a group of bowlers which one should be the quickest based on these attributes. So in terms of the individualness, we're not quite nailed all of it down yet. Having said that, is there anyone out there past or present that you believe as as close to the perfect action to bowl fast? I think I always revert back to the Brett Lee technique, but you talk to a batter and they said he wasn't the hardest to pick up because it was so clean. You could follow the ball all the way through the action. Um, and again, it comes back to some of the quirkiness as you see in actions actually make it harder for a batsman to interpret what's going to happen and where the ball's going to be. Um, there's big conversations around taller bowlers at the moment and how the bounce makes it feel in terms of quickness that they come up on the speed gun at mid 80s but they feel really quick and hit the bat hard so actually there's a bit more to it than pure speed it can be where the ball's delivered from the angle the height where you first see it within the action how easy it is for your brain to tune that um computer almost into working out and getting used to where the ball's going to be um, it's why we see batters struggle so much in the first 10, 20, 30 balls whilst they're still trying to program everything in and then get into that almost robotic nature of the balls there, I'll play that shot, etc. Is it all about the technique 
the biomechanics or just genetics play a part. I've heard some coaches talk about fast twitch fibers when they're referring to certain bowlers. What are your views on that? Yeah, it's a great question, nature versus nurture. And I think to a certain point, you can coach fast bowling. But I think to be X factor express pace, you have to have some underlying factors that are a bit extraordinary to the normal person. Um, you don't see many 90 plus mile an hour bowlers around and the countries that have got the most have typically got the biggest population. So it's, there must be some sort of na uh, nature within having some properties which allow you to do that. Um, but you can coach the attributes to get into good positions, but then there is a bit more of how quickly can you generate your power and so that will then start um, net of trickle down into what your muscles can do, what your, is in within them, the physiology, etc. cetera. So, um, or even to your height and stuff like that. So um, there is an optimal size probably for a fast bowler. You don't want to be too tall or too short because then there's a trade-off between your length of your levers and your strength and all sorts of bits. So there's all of these little hills that if you want to be on the top of rather than too far over or too far short of. And I think the great art of coaching is trying to take the individual to the top of as many as they can within their parameters and seeing where they get to rather than trying to push everybody to somebody else's top of the hills. And um, or eventually, when you compare that back to what they can do, you make them far worse because you end up chucking them over the edge of the cliff effectively and their performance worsens. So, um, yeah, I, I'm in the middle. I think it's a bit of both. And I think, I think it's a difficult argument to say it's one or the other, to be honest. You talked about the height of the bowler there in your example. Where does strength training come into this? Can a youngster great, that perhaps is a bit naive on the subject going into the gym trying to bulk themselves up? Can that actually have detrimental uh, impact into their in their ability to be able to bowl fast? Yeah, it massively. Um, the easiest way to explain it is you don't see many powerlifters bowling, do you? So uh, it's not all about strength. Um, and when there's been various examples of bowlers over the years that I have been really key into the gym and got really big and got slower because they can't shift that muscle mass as fast as they can do if they're a little bit smaller. Um, it's a tricky concept, fast bowling and strength, because you take the Brett Lee model, you generate most of your speed from your run up and then you just transfer it with this really clean action and actually don't have much time because you, the front foot to ball release phase is so short to fire your muscles up to use them um it's a bit like driving into a wall and you haven't got time to hit the brakes it's just is that they're ineffective so when you get to that level you don't need to be really really strong but at the same time that doesn't mean don't go and do your strength and conditioning programs because the strength that you have got allows you to run allows you to get through back foot contact into front foot contact and probably keeps you on the park from an injury point of view and gives you more preservation that way so you do need to do the strength stuff but you don't need to be really really strong to bowl fast um what we are seeing uh, on social media is a lot is around strength around back foot contact at the moment and trying to increase stiffness with ankles um and back leg strength and again from the research that pete always done at loughborough um we're starting to see that the faster bowlers and the ones that don't get injured have slightly straighter legs at back foot contact which probably means they're not using as much strength because their momentum's already aligned to just let you use that back leg almost like a lever to just fall over um, and you don't need to push. So you don't need to be strong if you don't need to push. The ones that we see collapse and have to push get into a really strong position with a bent knee and push really hard off it. So if you've got a technique which gets you into a bad position at back foot contact, you do need to be strong to correct. But actually the optimal way to go or the best way to go, you don't need to be that strong. So it's a bit of a, you try and talk to coaches about it and it's a bit confusing to start with because we're saying the worst ones are stronger than the ones that are doing it better and you don't need to get stronger to be better and it flips around. But um, the research that I did within my PhD, we took a bowler and we tried to make him stronger within a model um, that predicted what his performance would be and we saw minimal impact if we made we made it five percent stronger and the ball release speed was less than one percent higher so technique gave a 16 to 20 percent difference so you can see that technique's far more important than being stronger and i'd urge all youngsters to work on technique over strength if they've got the time you touched on it about like injuries i mean the correct technique prevents injuries you see a lot of youngsters as they go as they're growing as their body's growing and they're going through the ranks back injuries 
leg ankle problems if they have this uh, if they have a correct understanding of the biomechanics of the bowling action will it assist them in terms of injury prevention yeah so what's been really interesting with the research that Pete always done with the stress fractures at Loughborough um, alongside the ECB is what we're finding aligns with the performance research so we're finding that the back foot contact stuff that Pete's highlighting as being key in terms of stress fractures actually is the best way to set yourself up for back foot contact to get into the right shape at front foot contact so the whole sequence we kind of worked back from and gone what do we need to do to bowl fast now what we're we doing for a health point of view and they're kind of now sticking together and to go actually we're coming up with this picture of this is what you should be doing through the whole phase um, and I don't think you need to know a lot of biomechanics to or you don't need to know any of biomechanics to be able to use it so um, there's a phrase by Butch Harmon on a golf podcast by Trevor Winman that I really like he says you go for a golf lesson and you don't want your instructor to teach you everything about golf and the history of golf and what all the rules mean you just want to be able to swing the club and play golf and I think biomechanics um, and the way uh, we coach it or the coach developers especially we use and understand it we need to find a way to be able to um, teach coaches to use it rather than being able to understand it all and there are some key principles around alignment and stability and momentum that if you bring them into your technique it will help and keep you healthy but also probably increase your performance at the same time um, so things like trying to run up straight to try not to change direction into your back foot contact so when you do that your bottom half goes off in one direction and your top half has to go back towards the stumps or even worse to correct it so the ball goes straight your brain is great at finding solutions to make sure that you don't look um, stupid and do bowl the ball into the side of the net for instance so um, alignment's key and it, a lot of the interventions I do with you junior players and even up to elite level normally comes back to the run up and before back foot contact so um, I'd say yeah some good biomechanics be aligned make sure that you're in a stable place and then use that to accelerate from the floor upwards. Well, it's a fascinating subject just to end on if a young player a young coach even who is doesn't have the access to academies etc what is the main thing you'd like them to take away from this chat on the subject of biomechanics and fast bowling? I think it's key. Um, I really like what May said about getting into safe positions early. Um, wherever you are within your development, whether you're a 10 year old learning to bowl or an elite level athlete who's taken 500 test match wickets, um, getting into good positions allows you to develop skills, crafts, etc. on top. So, um, from a biomechanical point of view, there are them three fundamentals that I talked about. And if you start to work towards them, then you'll be in a much healthier position for when you start to grow, change shape um, and go through that period that happens to all of us at some point where we have a rapid growth spurt and everything feels a bit alien to us. We're not quite sure where our arms, our legs, etc. are going because our brains haven't fine tuned that movement process because we're growing so quickly. And there will be a period within that point where you can't bowl the ball where you want to and it will go all over the shop. But if you've got the solid basics underneath it, you'll know that you'll stay probably in a healthy position and it will come back to you when the strength aspect comes back through. Um, I find that fast bowling is frustrating because the way you do it at 10 years old is completely different to how you should do it when you're an adult. You haven't got the strength, so you can't run up fast enough. So then for you try and get your whole body around sideways and then try and generate all your speed by rotating back round again, which in the way we try and coach that out of adults. So actually there is an argument as a junior cricketer to try and work on your alignment, your stability and your balance that you might be a bit slower and you might um, not be as quick as some people that are running in and getting really rotational but actually long term you'll be in a better position from a health point of view especially with stress fractures and when your strength comes then you'll be able to start putting yourself free from them positions and get quicker and you'll soon out grow and out accelerate the players that can't do that um, the key the one thing that sticks with me all the time when you go to a junior session you watch them run up and they always run around the umpire and come in and it's all because they want to get their body positions and into that position to then almost rotate around like they're throwing it with a straight arm so I'd work on straight run-ups and trying to be in a good position at back foot contact and then just let everything else happen and as you get bigger and stronger you'll soon realize that actually 
you can bowl it much faster than running up and trying to throw with a straight arm. Paul, perfect. Thank you for giving me your time today on this fascinating subject. Really do appreciate it and all the best for the weeks and months ahead. So thank you. Thank you. So Neil Kagram, Cricket Life Stories, Paul Felton. Thank you.